she has no idea that a glorious future awaits him that he has to evolve in a certain direction that he has to reach a dimension where he will combine the scientist the sage and the illuminated in himself that he will live a life of happiness peace and glory he has no idea for him the ideal is this whirling round going in a plane going in a jet rushing from bombay to london from london to new york and then rushing in a car this way and that way spreading smoke and pollution everywhere he goes As a matter of fact I, i myself am right now doing it by rushing to a meeting in stockholm where i want to tell them about this marvelous findings and words of wisdom can you give us a piece of advice uh, how a regular man like myself can get out of this uh, rush and how the politicians can get out of their boxed in circles i agree with you that they are all well meaning they are merely following the current way but this way is built on ignorance of the spiritual law and the evolution of the human being. so they are not to be blamed it is the system to be blamed and the system is based on ignorance man has not to live only for his body but for his soul also and soul needs self reflection repose meditation calmness nobility and those characteristics those traits which were common among the spiritual teachers of the earth well even in this present hectic atmosphere a man can adjust his life so that he is not hurried and scurried and pushed this way and that he can be a master of his own time and it is absolutely necessary for everyone to have time for physical exercise and to have time for mental discipline just as every one of us is giving some time for physical exercise so every one of us must also give some time for the culture of earth. and that needs retirement to secluded places prayer worship creative occupations music and just sitting in beautiful places are things which have an aesthetic value which fascinate the mind which make it grow to make it expand beyond the narrow limits that are forced on it by our material existence in america as you know we uh... have obtained the highest living standard on earth yes we have uh, two and a half or three cars in every garage yes. and we have dishwashers and uh, electrical toothbrushes yes. and all these things i have noticed that myself and many of my friends in discussing these matters uh, we realize that uh, there is no great happiness in having these mechanical devices because all in a sudden we become uh, slaves under them they do not function they break down and we have to have them repaired all the time there is a fallacy in there however you take the rest of the world have noticed all these great conveniences and comforts that we have in america they like also to have outboard motor boats so they can go out water skiing or snowmobiles and have all that fun and it's very hard to tell another uh, person or another nation that i have done wrong i i have done it and i know that i shouldn't have done that but you don't do it uh, we are all like children we have to learn by our mistakes and how can we tell developing countries that uh, to develop in the way that we have done in europe and america thing to do well in the first place one of the consequences of this type of life has been the two great world wars we have fought the terrible agony suffering massacres and death secondly if there were real peace and happiness in this type of life in this hectic race after material possessions or carnal pleasures then why should millions of people millions of one million take to drugs take to meditation take to living simple lives take to building colonies where they are away from this rush and bustle 
Why should millions upon millions of people resort to these methods? And then why should out of the remaining millions or out of the whole nearly 10% go crazy? If we calculate the crazy, the dropouts, the drug addict, those who meditate, those who live for secluded places, if we count them all together, we will find that only a small fraction is which is happy with this type of life. The rest are not happy at all. No, that, that is correct. That is the way it is. So we should take a lesson from it. May I ask another question, maybe diverting a little from uh, our present uh, discussion, but I would like to have your comments on how do you see upon the energy situation. Today we are again on the brink of a war. It relates to energy. We are running out of our fossil fuels. We have developed alternative energy sources in the nuclear fission. We are today experimenting with nuclear fusion. That maybe an abundance of energy in, is in itself a, a doom to mankind. Are we, if we had more energy available today, would it be good for us? Wouldn't it be better if we didn't have it? Maybe that we are running out of these fossil fuels now is just something that is good. Man, man apparently has not been able to use his, the energy correctly. We have misused it. Let us take a lesson from the economy of nature. How nature has organized her resources to create her life, to create all the countless species of living creatures on earth. How all of them live within a certain limit and most of them have their needs prescribed. There is not unbridled license to any species, to any form of life, to do as it likes. If it does, it becomes extinct. Let us take a lesson from whales. Whales swallow tons of fishes, but there are only very few whales. The number is very small as compared to them. So the fact that whales are voracious eaters restricts their own population. Similarly, we find that every species of life on Earth only develops in an environment where it has sufficient for its needs. And nature takes care to create that sufficiency. And the needs and the appetites also of the animals correspond to the amount that is available for them to eat. Why should we all of a sudden take it into our head that every one of us is permitted even to spend as much energy as perhaps could spice for the survival of a hundred other people? The fact is, Mr. Nobel, that we are not doing anything by a plan. I mean to say a plan which would keep into view our evolution, the resources of the earth, the needs that we have and the economy of nature. We are doing everything haphazard. Nations are doing it out of rivalry, out of competition. There is nothing like a planned economy of nations anywhere. What we have done during the last, say, about a hundred years, we have consumed so much energy and so much resources of the earth which if frugally employed could have lost perhaps a thousand years. And if we were now to continue the same wasteful expenditure and this extravagance were to extend also to the developing countries, that is to all the four billion people, there would be nothing left in the next fifty years for us to consume. So all this is just haphazard thinking and wrong planning without any idea about survival, about the fact that mankind has to survive for millions of years. And we have to live a frugal life, just as nature is frugal, parsimonious. We have also to live a frugal life.